And what is it about people with bad breath? They always want to tell you secrets. The funkier your breath is, the closer people want to get to you. I love my parents so much, I lost my dad. I didn't lose him. I mean, I know where he's at right now. <laughs> but see, that's another thing. Our funerals are different. You know why? Because Mexican funerals are catered. <laughs> There's food. It's, it's like a family reunion and a quinceañera all rolled up into one. <laughs> Mexican funerals, unlike other funerals for Caucasians, I've been to a couple of white friends of mine who passed away. They're sad. They're there to mourn, as they should be. They're there, very solemn, very quiet. They even cry quietly. <laughs> The minister goes up and goes, we are here to mourn the passing of Brother Bob. <laughs> Brother Bob was a great family man, a loving father, all around swell fella. <laughs> Let us turn your hymnals to page 69. We shall sing. We shall gather at the river to prevent the Mexicans from crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican funerals are different. You know, people walk in there and go, hey, kid, hey, 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 I can't believe it. Chinga, oh, they ran out of pan dulce. Oh, oh, God. This cheap son of a bitch didn't even have menudo for his funeral. God. I don't care what you suffer from. Menudo cures it all, todo. <laughs> Menudo's made out of parts of the pig the pig doesn't want back. <laughs> you're out there, you're out there digging in menudo, because menudo looks the same whether you eat it or throw it up. You eat it, you throw it up, you shit it out, it's, it looks the same. That's going, Mwah. you're there munching. <laughs> There's a lot of homeless people go to Mexican funerals just to eat, just for the food. <laughs> you don't believe me? God forbid, should your life ever go south, pick up the paper, look at the obituaries. Whenever there's like a grandma who dies, like the Garcias, a Garcia or Gonzalez, you know there's gonna be good refin. <laughs> they're there, they're eating. We might suffer from a lot of things, but anorexia is not one of them. <laughs> I got an uncle, man, that's unreal. For example, he shouldn't even be alive anymore. Mi tío Camilo, this guy is a mystery to medicine. He's had three doctors tell him that, that he doesn't have long to live to get his personal effects in order. And they died. He outlived three of his doctors. The guy used to be in construction, so he's got his lungs have asbestos, and he smokes like a chimney, he drinks his livers the size of a raisin. There's no reason for him to be alive, yet he's alive. <laughs> they made a tracheotomy on him? Fuck, now he smokes through two places. <laughs> he's smoking one here and he's got one on the waiting deck, you know? <laughs> and his breath is horrendous. You know, old people have bad breath. And it isn't because they're not sanitary or they don't wash. It's just that no matter how much they clean, there's always a molecule, there's always a particle of something they ate back in 1981 <laughs> that's stuck in there, festering, giving them bad breath. And what is it about people with bad breath? They always want to tell you secrets. <laughs> the funkier your breath is, the closer people want to get to you. Hey, come here. Uncle's breath is so bad, shit, I know it's him on the phone. <laughs> My mother calls me up last summer, she goes, mijo, you know, your tío Camilo doesn't have long to live, so I know you got some frequent flyer miles and you're going to France, why don't you take him with you? You're going to Paris, take him with you. I said, ma, I'll do anything for you, mama. I know, and you're gonna do this. <laughs> there we are, flying, we go to Paris. I mean, the French aren't exactly the most friendly people on the planet. I don't know why they hate us Americans. We've saved their ass every war they've had. <laughs> and they don't like us. Imagine two Mexicans walking down the streets of Paris, you know? And if you don't speak French, you're, you're retarded as far as they're concerned. 
you know, we're Mexicans. We're trying to talk to them in Spanish. We figured, shit, you're right next door to Spain. <laughs> you must have picked up something along the way. <laughs> Oiga, señor, este, ¿dónde está el uh, arte triunfo, el la pinche tower, que la chingadera, you know? <laughs> you know, you know the reason why you guys are famous, that shit, you know, like a radio antenna chingadera, what do you call it? <laughs> Excusez-moi. Voulez-vous no parler français? Pues chéquete en osu y no convertes en zapata. Mi tío goes, ¿qué dices, güey? You know, what is it about old Mexican men? No matter how old they are, they still think they control chingazos. They could be, they could be missing a leg, they still want to get into a fight. And every time, they always adjust their pants. Órale, cabrón. Ale, chingado. Ale. And you can see their shit, you know, you can... Their genitals look like steamed vegetables going down there. <laughs> Finally, we find out where it is. We walk down, we get to the Arch, the arch of Triumph, the Arch, the arch de Triomphe. <laughs> and we see La Tour de Eiffel. And my tío goes, well, what's the big deal here? I said, well, that, that right there, that's the Eiffel Tower, one of the wonders of the world. He goes, that chingadera? <laughs> How long's it been there? I don't know, since the 1890s. Well, shit, when are they gonna finish it? <laughs> uh, I said, it is finished. No, it's not finished. I've been in construction. They need the drywalling y la chingada todavía. <laughs> Nobody's gonna rent an apartment right there. <laughs> Chingadera, I've been to Texas. That's an oil rig. No están chingado que... Big deal. <laughs> we go to the hotel. <laughs> We're staying at the Four Seasons, right? I mean, I want the best. If he really is gonna die, I want him to get a taste of the best. You know, we're at the Four Seasons, but we got separate rooms. I got him his room, I took care of him. I'm not in my room 10 minutes, the phone rings. Hey, it's me, shit, I know. <laughs> I know it's you, what do you want? Hey, this is really fancy, me home. Yeah, tío, you know, it's all right. Nothing, nothing but the best for my, my tios. It's really nice, mijo, but uh, <clears throat> I got this little problem. What happened now? Well, uh, it's really fancy, huh? Yeah. How come they got two toilets? <laughs> I go, Theo, they're not two toilets. One of them's a bidet. That's for, that's for the ladies, you know? Hijo, that's a bidet, huh? See? What happened? Pues yo creo que me cagué in the bidet. <laughs> What? Yeah, man. I try to flush it and it just shoved the shit up my ass. I go, oh, God. It's not a toilet, it's for the ladies. They sit down and the water squirts up there, you know, to clean themselves. Hijola. Pues, what am I gonna do now? I go, listen, don't worry about it. Just call housekeeping and they'll come and they'll take care of it. No, chingo, that's too embarrassing. I'll take care of it myself. <laughs> <laughs>